All right, class. So I'm going to give you a 10 minute overview of a fairly abstract concept uh, in order to get you going on your homework. Um, the math behind it is actually very simple. If you can balance equations and do conversions, then you can do the math. Uh, the idea of applying it to a chemical reaction help is trips some people up. So I want you guys to see it and try it this week as your homework. Um, and then next week we will continue to practice with it and we'll work through the homework problems as well until you're feeling more comfortable with it. So with that in mind, um, we're going to start by using a familiar reaction and, and balancing it. Um, so we're going to start with the reaction we've used before, which is iron plus oxygen turns to iron three oxide. So this is just iron metal rusting in oxygen and it makes iron three oxide. And if we want to balance this, we want to look at it and say, okay, well, right off the bat, I know that I'm, I can only have an even number of oxygens on the, on the reactant side. So I know I'm going to have to have an even number of oxygens over here. We can start by putting a two there. Then that means that we're in order to balance our oxygens, we're going to have to put a three in front of the O2 molecules and a four in front of the iron. And so conservation of mass is what led us to balancing this way. We know we can't make atoms or get rid of atoms. Um, just willy-nilly, we have to make sure we have the same number of atoms before and after. But now that we have it balanced, these coefficients actually give us a lot of information as to um, how much product we can make or how much of a reactant is going to get used up. And it really is very, very similar to a recipe. If you're cooking in a kitchen and you have a certain recipe that says three eggs equals one omelet, Every time you make you mix three eggs together, you can make one omelet with that. That's really what these coefficients are going to tell us as well. It's saying every time I use four moles of iron, I can make two moles of product, which means we can write that as a conversion. The same way we can write three eggs equals one omelet. I have no idea if that's spelled right, I think it is um, beside the point, right? We can, the same way we can write a conversion says three eggs equals one omelet, we can say four moles of iron used equals two moles of Fe2O3 made. All right, and the same, I didn't write in the used versus made here for the eggs, but I could, right? For every three eggs used, one omelet made. Right, and so this makes a lot of sense. This is a little bit more abstract, takes them getting used to, but all it's doing is pulling the coefficients from the balanced reaction and turning them into a conversion. And once we have that conversion, it allows us to use a balanced chemical reaction to figure out, to convert from moles of one compound to moles of a different compound. We can combine them in whatever ratios we want, whatever combination we want. We could have can be comparing how many moles of iron are used for every three moles of oxygen used. Um, and if we wanted to write this out as a conversion, let's do the omelet example first. If I said I, I had 18 eggs, how many omelets could I make? Well, for every eight, if I have 18 eggs and every three eggs used, is one omelet made. Eggs cancels eggs, and we're left in just omelets, 
right? So 18 divided by 3 would give us a total of 6 omelets. Using this, the coefficients up here from our balanced reaction is no different. It's the same process. It just seems different because the idea of moles is trickier and atoms are trickier than eggs because everybody's dealt with eggs before. Maybe not everybody's made an omelet, but everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? If we're trying to do this for a chemistry problem, we're not going to be in eggs and omelets, but it's going to look the same. So let's say I had 1.5 moles of iron, and I want to know how many moles of product I could make. I need to be I need to convert moles of iron to moles of product, and so I'm going to do that using these coefficients. I have 1.5 moles of iron, and for every four moles of iron is two moles of product, of iron three oxide. Moles of iron cancels out moles of iron. And I'm going to be left in moles of product. So in this case, when you plug it in, you get 0 0.75 moles of product. Again, mathematically, that's really not that hard, right? All we did is we took these whole numbers that we balanced with and we turned it into a ratio that we use as a conversion factor. The only way it gets any more complicated is if I don't if you don't start in moles here. If you started in, say, grams of iron, then it takes a little, it takes one extra step to go from grams of iron to moles of iron. You just use the atomic mass and molecular weight, depending on what, what compound we're talking about. But once you get to moles, then we can compare. We're, we're in counting objects now. We're talking about a number of atoms. So we can go from, we know that it was balanced according to how many atoms of each type are on either side. So once we get our units in moles for any of these compounds, then it's just as simple as taking these coefficients and turning them into a conversion factor. Right? And if I wanted to do something like how many moles of oxygen are going to be used up, I would just use a different conversion. I wouldn't convert to moles of product, I would convert to moles of oxygen. For every four moles of iron, it's three moles O2. So that, that changes the ratio, but where I'm getting these doesn't change. And the fact that we're converting from moles of one thing to moles of another is based on this balanced reaction. Right, so and then in this case we're gonna wind up with uh what is that gonna be one point one eight or something like that? Once we actually do the math on this one. Uh, one point one three. Or just 1.1 if we're only keeping sig figs. All right, so again, a little abstract, but and we're going to go through next week and we're going to spend more time, do another analogy with it, do more practice with this. Uh, I want to see if you guys can do number three on the homework. Um, I'm removing number four from this this week's homework assignment. We'll do that. We'll tackle that one next week in, as a homework assignment. Um, it's just going to come down to get everything in moles and then convert moles one thing to moles of another. And then maybe one last step to go from moles of a reactant back to grams of that other reactant.
where again you're just going to use um, the molecular weight or the atomic mass to do that. All right, and so just so you've seen the term, this relatively abstract idea that's very simple mathematically uh, is very powerful in chemistry has its own name that sounds more scary than it is. Um, this idea of using the coefficients as conversion factors is called stoichiometry. So anytime you're using coefficients as a conversion factor, that is stoichiometry, and that's all it is, is saying it's that idea that you can say for every two moles of product, I need four moles of iron. Or for every three moles of oxygen, I'm going to use four moles of iron. Any way we want to combine those coefficients, when we do that, it's called stoichiometry. And with that, I think that's all you need to at least give it a good try between this video and the uh, key that's available. And we'll go through these problems on Monday in class. Have a good weekend, everyone.